Genshin Impact players, how's it going? The new banners were just dropped on the Genshin Impact official website, so we're going to be taking a look at those today. We have so many great things to talk about. All right, so here we are at the in-game notices. You can go over to event right here, and you'll be able to see all of the new information on all of the banners. So this is really, really exciting, guys. They didn't release the second half banners like they did that other patch. This is just going to be the first two banners of the patch, but it's still some pretty big news. So first off, we have the Ayato banner, which is also shared with the Venti banner, and this is going to feature Yunjin, Sucrose, and Shang Ling. Now, free-to-play players, we're going to talk about this more in a second, but free-to-play players, this is looking like a very good banner for you guys. But then we also are going to be talking about the weapon banner. As you can see, these are the weapons on there. You have Ayato's signature weapon, and you also have Elegy for the end. So, so we'll start by talking about the character banners. Obviously, nothing's changed about the rates or anything. This is just going to be Ayato, Yunjin, Sucrose, and Shang Ling. Now, if you guys watch the channel or basically any meta-chasing channels, you'll know that Sucrose and Shang Ling are some of the most popular units in the game specifically because they are valued so highly in so many different teams while well, Shangling's more valued in like one team with a thousand different variants but you know what I mean Sucrose can be slotted into so many great teams and she's just an absolutely fantastic unit if you don't have Kazuha and you don't have Sucrose you could get Sucrose and technically you wouldn't really need Kazuha right granted I think both are really great and having both is super solid but Sucrose provides you a lot of value with Viridescent Venner being able to shred enemy resistances to certain elements being able to swirl and do a ton of damage in taser compositions and being able to hold thrilling tales of dragon slayers which can buff the next character you switch to after you use her so this banner is really solid on the premise of having sucrose already but on top of that we have Shang Ling. Now, if you've played the game to AR20, you've done Eddie the Abyss, you probably have access to Shang Ling. If you haven't gotten her yet, you will get access to her eventually. You just have to clear the third floor of Abyss. It's not too tough once you get going. And once you have access to Shang Ling, you've opened up a world of different team compositions that can just roll through enemies with just insanely high damage. So I'm really excited about this because her coming on this banner means that you guys can get constellations if you're pulling for Ayato or Venti. Now, I already made a video about is Venti still good? I think that video is still relevant and in general I would argue that pulling for Venti is a good idea. The only time I would say it's not worth pulling for Venti is if we had a confirmed Kazuha rerun for next patch because right now Kazuha fits the content a little bit better than Venti does. But with that being said you can't really go wrong pulling for Venti either. He's a very valuable tool and he absolutely just destroys most domains in the game. Basically all overworld content and in the future some Abyss content as well. They always cater the Spiral Abyss towards the characters that are active on the banners so in this case we'll see a bunch of enemies probably that venti could scoop up and yeah he just trivializes a lot of content so in general based off of these three characters alone this is already a good banner but then you also have yunjin now yunjin to me is an amazing unit but the thing is she is a little niche what i mean by that is that most of her value comes from normal attacking units and not a lot of units actually just use their normal attacks to deal damage you have yoimiya physical official and yula those are the big three you have razor as well but outside of that most characters are using charged attacks or a combination of both so Yunjin doesn't see as much value there but with that being said if you do play Yomiya you do play physical official you play Yula and you want to find a way to put Yunjin into a comp there or you play Razor and want to do the same thing she actually is a pretty good pickup I think that her kit concept is very good and as we get more characters that can use normal attacks as a bulk of their damage Yunjin is going to be an amazing unit so for those reasons I actually think this character banner is really solid you have two guaranteed very very good characters if you've been playing since launch you may already have those characters see six in which case this banner does lose a little bit of value to you but also on top of that one other thing i didn't mention is that if you manage to get yunjin to c6 you also get attack speed which is a very hard buff to get in this game there's not a lot of ways to buff attack speed and so having a character that does that passively with their burst whenever you have c6 is very very good uh so i know for me personally i'm going to be picking up c6 yunjin this time around now overall this looks promising i will be releasing an ayato review the day that he goes live probably the second he goes live so i definitely recommend you subscribe to the channel if you want to see that and if you want to know if he's good because chances are some of you guys already have venti so you're just looking at the banner like you want sucrose or shangling and you're not sure if it's worth pulling for Ayato. all that information i'll have for you on launch day i think the character banner is pretty good looking over at the weapon banner though this actually magnificent magnificent banner i mean the four stars could use a little bit of work but in general the the five stars are, are magnificent okay so elegy for the end for some reason not a lot of people see the value in this weapon and i'm not sure why that is i think maybe because that has an energy recharge main stat a lot of people don't understand that it's good but for those of you who don't know elegy for the end gives your entire team a passive attack buff and when the ability is active it's going to give you a passive elemental mastery buff as well it's very powerful and not just on venti it can be used on tons of different characters 
characters like Diona, for example, she's another great user. Most characters that actually have an elemental skill that can hit multiple times, pretty good, two thumbs up. So in general, this bow is good, but also Ayato's weapon is pretty good too. So let me show you guys what I mean. If you scroll down here, you'll be able to see that yesterday they actually talked about the stats on this weapon. I didn't want to make one video on this weapon because I feel like it would have been really dragged out. But as you can see here, here are the stats. Obtain 12% all elemental damage bonus. It's the same as Miss Splitter in that way. When other nearby party members use elemental skills, the character equipping this weapon will gain one wave spike stack. It has a max of two stacks. This effect can be triggered once every 0.3 seconds. When the character equipping this weapon uses an elemental skill, all stacks of wave spike are consumed to gain rippling upheaval. We'll just call it a buff. Uh, each stack of wave spike consumed will increase normal attack damage by 20% for eight seconds. So basically what it's saying is you're going to use two characters elemental skills while the holder of this weapon is off the field. And then when the character that's holding this weapon uses their elemental skill, they'll get a buff of either 20% or 40% normal attack damage. So as you can tell, this is very catered towards Ayato. It also has 33% crit rate as well, which is just super strong. You have your normal five star weapon scaling and it actually uses a material that we don't have yet. So if you're planning on maxing this sword, you're going to have to explore the chasm some. My initial thoughts on this weapon are that it's probably not as good as Jade Cutter and Miss Splitter in general use. And what I mean by that is that for Ayato, yes, this is going to be his best in slot weapon. I don't doubt that at all. I think it's going to be perfect for him. But I believe that Miss Splitter and Jade Cutter both get a lot more value on multiple characters than this weapon will. Now, this weapon is not bad. Let me make that very clear. 33 crit rate is really solid and it's a five star and it's going to give you elemental damage bonus. Even if you don't use this on Ayato, the sword is a very strong stat stick and it's not a bad weapon to get if you are rolling for something like Elegy. But for general use, Jade Cutter is going to have a bit of a power spike over this weapon because it has so much more crit rate and it gives you attack based on your character's HP, which ends up being more than the attack of this weapon. And of course, with math, it gets a lot more complicated than that. But what I'm saying is that Jade Cutter is a better overall weapon than this weapon and that Miss Splitter is also an, a better overall weapon than this weapon. But with that being said, it's still not bad. There are worse weapons in the game that are five stars. If you do get this weapon for your Ayato and you're wondering, can I put this on a different character if I'm not using Ayato? Yes, you can. It has crit rate, which already makes it a good weapon and it has high base attack. Now you might be thinking something along the lines of the problem with Jade Cutter, where you can't really use it on Ayaka or Kaya without hitting diminishing returns. And I think this is often a misunderstood issue. The thing is that yes, you will overcap on crit with Jade Cutter on Ayaka and Kaya, but the weapon is still very strong on them. It's not like it's worse than a four star or worse than other five stars. It's actually still very good. You're just overcapping on crit. This weapon won't necessarily have the same issue because the crit rate is a bit lower, but I could still see you running into the same problem with cryo characters. So if you're worried about Jade Cutter because of the crit rate it gives you, you probably should be worried about this one as well because the crit rate isn't that far off. But with that being said, everyone's situation is going to be different depending on your artifacts and substats. Overall, I just want to say, and I want to drill into you guys' heads, that this weapon is actually a pretty solid weapon for the stats that it has, even if you're not getting the full effect of it. Would I recommend rolling on it just because it's a good weapon? Not necessarily. I think if you want this weapon, then you need to also want Elegy for the end. You have to be willing to get both because the weapon banner is always a scam. But let's go back to the weapon banner. So we also have the four stars to talk about real quick. We have Rust, the Flute, Dragon's Bane, Wood Sith, and the Sacrificial Great Sword. Now, three of these weapons actually have some use on different characters. You have Wood Sith, which can be used on almost any Catalyst user that's not holding Thrilling Tales, right? Thrilling Tales is such a valuable resource, it's hard to put away, but if you are going to run a damaging Catalyst, Wood Sith is a very good weapon, even for characters like Ningguang who don't get that much value out of Elemental Mastery. Wood Sith just has so much power in its passive to give you Elemental Damage Bonus and Attack that overall it's a very solid weapon. Rust is also an okay weapon. The thing is, you're not going to really want to use Rust unless you're using either Child, Yoimiya, or Physical Official, but that being said, it's a very good weapon for those three characters. If you have Yoimiya and you don't have a good weapon for her, but you want to get Elegy or you want to get Aito's weapon, this banner might not be so bad for you. And then we have Dragon's Bane, which ends up being a really solid weapon for Melt Rosaria, for Xiangling, and for Hu Tao. Hu Tao with this weapon gets so much value. It is awesome if you are a free-to-play player and you don't have a lot of options for Hu Tao. Dragon's Bane is amazing. I cannot stress this enough. Very underrated weapon because it doesn't have crit on it, but the value it gives you out of dealing extra damage bonus to enemies that have high draw on them. Just magnificent. Absolutely wonderful. Really like Dragon's Bane. Think it's a wonderful weapon. As far as Sacrificial and the Flute go, uh, there's not a lot of characters that use these as like best in slot weapons. You can find use for Sacrificial on characters that want to sell battery. Like for example, if you really didn't have any other option, you could use Sacrificial on Beto to try to battery her more and make her the sole Electro unit in your team. Full character in your team. Uh, 
I wouldn't personally recommend it, but that is an option you have. Whereas the flute isn't really a weapon that is like super good for anybody, but it's not really bad either. It's basically a middle ground upgrade. If you're a free to play player who doesn't have an attack weapon built yet, if you haven't been to Inazuma, so you don't have that weapon recipe, the flute will be an upgrade in that way, but there's not any character that strictly uses the flute as like a very solid weapon for that character. So that would be the most throwaway weapon of the bunch. So in general, if you were going to ask how valuable these banners are, I've already said this a few times, but Ayato and Venti's banner, I think is amazing, especially if you are a newer player to the game, getting someone like Venti, Sucrose, and Shangling could be insanely good for your account. We don't have the verdict on Ayato yet. Like I said, wait for the review. And then if you're free to play, of course, I never really condone rolling on these banners if you're free to play unless you've just been saving for such a long time for this specific character and weapon then you know you do you but that being said if you're a light spender or if you plan on going in on this banner at all the two five stars are both decent weapons elegy is actually very good but the ayato weapon is pretty good no matter who you put it on just because of the stats that it has in the elemental damage bonus it's not going to beat out every single best in slot but most four stars on most characters will get beaten out by this weapon anyways you guys with that all being said that's my thoughts on the current banner I think that you guys should be very excited about this if you are looking for Xiangling, Sucrose, or Yunjin. I know I'm super excited, especially for my free-to-play account. That, that account's gonna pop off. Let me know what you guys think of the banners down below in the comments. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see the Ayato review day one when it comes out, and I'll catch you guys next time.